I would like to share on um, uh, uh, a phrase that was on my heart this week from Hebrews five uh, eleven, and the phrase is uh, being becoming dull of hearing, and that was something that I was thinking about, and in the context of the truth that I've been I heard from NCCF so many so many times so many years, and that is there are two. There is one commandment that is very clear to me, to given to me as a member of NCCF, and that is uh, that is very clear in two two scriptures. One is First Corinthians fourteen one, which basically talks about desiring earnestly to prophesy, and the second one is Bobby kind of brought that up in in his initial prayer uh, from Ephesians chapter four, verse sixteen. So through prophecy, I edify and build the body of Christ, which is this body, um, and that is that is my responsibility. That is that is a, a responsibility that is given by God, and uh, I have to take that gladly and do my best. But one thing, as I was thinking about it, that 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 I do that is by obviously listening to God, living faithful in my personal life. Isaiah fifty four fifty chapter fifty verse four, where I'm listening to him as a disciple when he gives me as a tongue as a disciple to actually help the weary one and not only that but but in Romans 10 we see that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God that I whenever whenever I prophesy that I'm speaking in faith and and I, I share the word of God and doing all that uh, there is another scripture in Romans 12 1 2 that as a living sacrifice I am renewing my mind I'm being transformed in that process, I'm sharing words that are full of faith, being transformed uh, as a disciple that will edify the body and eventually grow. The body will grow in love. I heard this so many times. So I was convicted of that this week uh, to see how am I doing it. But one thing that I felt that that was hindering this whole commandment in my life, I felt was uh, which making me dull of hearing God's word and building up the voice of faith is, is this thing about distractions. We live in a time of age where uh, anyone with a phone can voice their opinions. And you know, all, all you need is a phone and an internet and, and you just can voice your opinions. And if I give my ear to all those things and then I voice my opinions and it just gets, gets a vicious circle, um, what I'm doing in that whole process is uh, allowing my ear to, to let all these voices get in and not building myself up to actually hear the voice of God. Because... and. Eventually, what it is hurting is it is preventing me from doing my part in building the body of Christ. So, and God was reminding me that uh, to stay away from it, um, to find ways that where, I mean, there are so many scriptures about using our time wisely and things like that. But I feel like uh, in the future and even in the recent past, that these distractions will increase and not decrease. <laughs> Obviously, technology, you know, there's so many advancements in technology and things are going to get faster and uh, and I suppose smoother. So God was reminding me that, hey, get back to, I want your year. I, I want your full year, your full attention so that I can speak to you that something that will be useful and edifying and timely. And if you don't do that and give your year for everything else, then God cannot do that. And uh, that, was, that was something that I was convicted. And this is another scripture that we heard in Acts uh, from Brother Zach, I think early a few, few months ago about Athenians. In uh, Acts 17, Athenians had two things. They wanted to hear new things. They want to um, they want to they want to hear new things and they want to see new things. They, those are the two things. Acts 17, 21 says that these are the Athenians. They spend their time in nothing other than telling and hearing something new. So if I'm constantly uh, uh, paranoid about knowing what's the latest that's going on in the world, and I want to know the latest and immediately right now in next two minutes or or even with the what happens with that, I felt is even when I'm hearing the word of God, I can hear with this dull hearing that, yeah, okay, this is about Noah. I, I heard about Noah, I know all the scriptures. And I cannot have a heart of re, to receive the word because I'm, 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 I'm becoming Athenian now. And uh, so I, I really um, ask God to uh, help me to keep my heart fresh so that there is no strain on my heart when it, something is repeated because it's not true in my life. So obviously God is telling me something to hear it again so that I can apply. I can go to him and say, Lord, this is not true in my life. Make it reality. So, uh, and then I'm not uh, tempted to share something new also um, because of honor. You know, Galatians 1.10, we cannot be bond servants of Christ if we are trying to please men. So many scriptures are very clear to us 
Um, so I really trust that God will help me to uh, desire to have a heart to build the body of Christ and uh, rule out everything else that is preventing that from happening and give my heart, give my heart, give my ear to the Lord. And uh, he can do some amazing things with it. He can fill us with his love. He can make our tongues like a tongue of a disciple. And he can, um, if God has used donkeys in Bible, he can use us if we are available. And I believe that if, if our ears are available, our hearts are available for the Lord, uh, I believe that God will do his part in filling us with his love and building the body of Christ. I trust that God will help, help us, help me to do that. I wanted to share about unity. Uh, if you can turn with me to John chapter 17, verse 20. John chapter 17, verse 20. Uh, this is Jesus praying on behalf of his disciples uh, to the Father. And uh, we read here what Jesus prayed. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 20. I am not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Jesus saw how his disciples lived for three and a half years. He saw that the disciples uh, were more or less in peace with each other. They were having arguments once in a while, but you can see on the whole, the disciples were at peace with each other. But Jesus didn't see a spirit of unity among the disciples. And so as the time came for Jesus to go back to his father, Jesus uh, had this burden on his heart that his disciples would live in unity. And so we see here Jesus praying to the father on behalf of his disciples saying, Father, I'm not happy that these disciples are living in peace with each other. I want them to be united. I want them to become one just as you and I are one. Jesus was clearly not satisfied with seeing peace among his disciples. He wanted unity. Uh, in a world that we live in, where there is so much strife, so much division, so much of divorce, it's very easy for us to feel satisfied and accomplished when we see peace in our homes, when we have peace with the brothers in the church. We can feel we're very satisfied. We can feel accomplished that we have something that the world doesn't have. And we can mistake peace for unity and we can be satisfied with just peace. But God's desire for us is that he, he wants us to have unity. He wants us to go a, a step higher from peace and he wants us to have unity uh, so that his name may be glorified. So what's the difference between peace and unity? They sound very similar, but I see there's a difference between peace and unity. Imagine there are two teams playing tug of war. Team A is uh, pulling the rope as hard as they can in one direction. And team B is pulling the rope as hard as they can in the opposite direction. Both of them are trying to win the contest. And imagine a person in team B who is standing there, who is holding the rope, not with two hands, but just with one hand. And with his other hand, he's looking up his smartphone. He's looking at the latest news. He's trying to follow Instagram or Facebook feed. He's part of the team. He's not abusing anyone. He's not beating anyone. He's not fighting with anyone. He's part of the team. And he's also helping in pulling the rope, but he's not united with the rest of the team. He doesn't recognize that the need of the hour is to pull the rope as hard as he can so that his team can win. And that's the difference between peace and unity. We can be with each other without fighting, quarreling, all of us are so civilized that we don't say things that will hurt the other person. We don't rub the other person the wrong way. We can have boundaries around us so that we live in peace. And peace is great and it's much better than strife, but that's not God's ultimate purpose for his people. God wants his people to be united just as he was one with the father. It's not a great testimony. If I can say at the end of 2021 that I didn't fight with my wife, that didn't, didn't fight with anyone in the church. It's not a great testimony, but if I can say, I've become more united with my wife, I've become more united with the brothers in the church at the end of 2021, that's a wonderful testimony. And how can I have unity and not just peace? How did the disciples have unity? When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they became 
one. Even Jesus, having spent three and a half years with the disciples, could not unite them. But when the Holy Spirit came into their lives, Holy Spirit knit the disciples together in love as they submitted to the Holy Spirit. And they became one. Peter and John, with two different personalities, with an age gap, they were able to work together because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus once said, Against the, I'm going to build a church against whom the gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to build a congregation against whom the gates of hell will not prevail. He said, I'm going to build a church, a church where people are united, a home where the husband and wife are united. It is against such a group of people that the devil will not be able to win. And I pray that I will pursue unity uh, in this year with the help of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to feel satisfied with just having peace in the home, with just having peace with the brothers. I want to see that God's ultimate purpose for me is to seek unity with my spouse and to seek unity with the brothers. And I want to submit uh, to the Holy Spirit's uh, guidance. Thanks. Memory verse, Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever. For in God the Lord, we have an everlasting rock. Can you hear me, brother? Okay. Thank you. The rock on which this verse stands is the previous verse. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. This is the New Living Translation version. Uh, Jesus' trust was only in his Father, and his thoughts were fixed on the Father. So he had perfect peace all his life, even when the sea was raging and the boat was about to sink. Mark 4, 37-39. God's word is the anger for my trust in God. Colossians 3, 2 tells me to set my mind on things above because the things on earth that can be shaken will be removed. Hebrews 12, 27. Hebrews 12, 1 says of uh, fixing our eyes on Jesus. This everlasting rock is our loving heavenly father. Matthew 6, 9. Even if I am hanging on that thin rope of promise, as we see in the picture, my heavenly Father assures me, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. So I trust in the Lord to be free from discouragement and self-condemnation. I trust in the Lord for an overcoming life. I trust in the Lord that he will enable me to purify myself, 1 John 3.3, 3, and create in me the nature of Jesus Christ, Romans 8.29. I trust in the Lord that he will strengthen me to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in everything, 1 Thessalonians 5.16-18. I trust in the Lord to Endure till the end, Matthew 24, 13. Thy will be done, O Heavenly Father. Amen. Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. I just want to share how this memory verse encouraged me uh, this week. I, what stood out to me was the word uh, trust. And I looked up this word trust in a concordance because I wanted to see what it meant. And in this concordance, it said the word trust means to lean on. And so then this memory verse becomes lean on the Lord forever. And it reminds me of a time when I was in high school and I, I hurt my leg and I couldn't walk. So the doctor gave me crutches. And so anytime I had to move, I had to lean my entire body weight onto those crutches. And that's how I could get from one place to another. And so that's what I was thinking of when I thought of this memory verse. Just like those crutches, I need to lean completely on the Lord and not on my own strength. And that's something I need to do forever. And what stood out to me was the context for which this verse appears. If you notice in the beginning of this chapter, 
It says this verse is sung as part of a song in that day. And in that day, it refers to a time when the Lord has come back to the earth. And if you look in the previous chapter, in Isaiah chapter 25, you see what the Lord was going to do once he comes back. And it says there that he's going to have a tremendous banquet for his saints on, on Mount Zion. He's going to swallow up death for all time. And he's even going to defeat uh, the enemies um, of Israel. And so you could say that this is a time where there's a lot of peace. It was a really good time for people. And what stood out to me was that even in this time, this was a reminder to lean on the Lord forever. And I think the practical application for myself is that I notice it's easy to lean on the Lord when things aren't going so well, when there's a difficult trial or if I'm doing something I don't know. But this verse reminds me to lean on the Lord, even when things are going well, even when I'm confident in what I can do, but I always have that attitude of leaning. And I believe that this is not just something I want to share, but I believe God is going to make this a reality in my life. And that's how this verse has encouraged me this week. Thank you.